welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communication and Marketing Department. And as you can tell already, um, we're in a different location today. We are going to get down and dirty. We are at the City and NASA's Trash to Steam plant, and my guest today is John McDonald, who runs the plant. Hi, Robin. How are you? I've been looking forward to seeing this and actually kind of wanting to hook onto a tour before, so this gives me a chance. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Debbie Blanton does a great job with she the does. Uh, City Clean Cities Commission to uh, round up guests for a tour to trash. And I, I don't know how she sells that, <laughs> but uh, we, we like to think we give them a very good tour of where Hamptonians trash actually goes. I think that is just the first basic thing that I want to set straight. People assume that their trash goes to the landfill because in 99% of localities, that's where trash goes. It goes to a landfill. But for quite a number of years, Hampton's trash has been burned up here. Is that right? That's correct. A lot of people do agree with that. They, they think, well, Hampton has a landfill, so obviously that's where the trash goes. Not at all. Um, for over 32 years now, we have partnered with Langley NASA, or sorry, NASA Langley Research Center in a uh, symbiotic relationship. They need steam and a lot of it. We found that uh, burning trash is a great way to make steam and supply all their needs. So all of the residents' trash comes to the steam plant. In fact, we need even more. So we take all the trash from the city of Pocosin, take all the trash from Fort Eustis, Langley Air Force Base, NASA Langley Research Center, and Fort Monroe when it was still going strong. That, that's quite a bit. And you know, you hear a lot about green technologies and recycling and things like that now, but when this plant started, it was pretty unusual. It really was. Back uh, in, the, in the late 70s, early 80s, incinerators were still fairly common. They uh -huh. literally just burned trash to get rid of it, and that was it. There was no uh, energy extracted from that. Mm -hmm. So NASA being the uh, leader in technology that they are had found research for waste to energy. Burn that trash, extract, uh, extract the thermal value, make steam, and use it. Put it to good use. Which is exactly what we do and we've been doing for 32 years very well. Back then it was very what we call a stick shift. The, the operators were hands-on quite a bit and as you can see behind you, we've moved into the digital age very well. In fact, uh, when the school kids come on the tours, I like to tell them that if they can think back to their history lesson and uh, Robert Fulton, I could have Robert Fulton, the inventor of the steamship, come up and he would recognize certain parts of the plant, certainly the boiler, some of the pumps. But if we came into this room, it's all 21st century technology. Mm -hmm. We're using digital controls to send out electronic, electric, pneumatic, hydraulic signals to a 32-year-old plant so that we can keep the manning down to only teams of five people. No way, teams of five people? That's correct. There's only 38 people that work in this entire building. And it's 12, 12 on and 12 off, That's so correct. it's work. a 24-7 operation. Every I guess you have to do year. that yeah. to um, keep up with the demand and so that the big piles Absolutely. of trash don't uh, if, get if we're stupid. If we're down for a day, it backs up. But if you take a look, one of the key features that we have to keeping our manpower low is our operator can basically control the entire plant from a chair right here at these six screens. He can observe steam pressure, the actual boiler operations themselves, mm -hmm. the water needed to make the steam, and our all important back end equipment. That's what keeps us in compliance with our permits through DEQ and makes us responsible citizens for our neighbors. Uh, we basically filter out all the contaminants, sulfur dioxide, hydrochloric acid, particulates, they could possibly make it through our stack. We collect them all down at the bottom of the plant in ash, and that is the only thing that leaves the plant. But what's even better about it is our trash is tested to be chemically inert. We test every quarter, and then once a year, we test for every possible contaminant that can be in there so that it will not leach into the groundwater or cause problems. It's so clean, as a matter of fact, you can use the sanitary top fill over the Bethel landfill itself for their daily working face. Oh, wow. So there's another benefit to having that. Absolutely. It's just not raw trash thrown around for seagulls. OK, so talk me through what happens when a trash truck gets here. We're what we call a mass burn plant. So the trash trucks come in. They arrive on the tipping floor. 
they tip their okay. trash Don't into a pit okay. that's about 30 feet deep. 30 and feet, okay. 30 feet deep, and then we stack it another 30 feet high. So we'll take up to 240 tons a day. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of trash. Okay. The uh, crane operator basically keeps an eye out for what the trucks are tipping, making sure that we're not getting things that we really can't burn or shouldn't burn. And an example also, of that might be like a refrigerator or something very large. That's or? an excellent example. <laughs> well, and, I know because the trash And we have had that, them. That is the only thing that goes to the landfill, basically, is large appliances. And, and how you can fit a refrigerator in a dumpster, <laughs> I don't know, but people, people are very have. inventive. Okay. All right. Um, he'll sort the trash. What I mean, he's not going to pick it out and choose what we're going to burn, but he mixes it all together so that if we had a load of wet trash come in, we're not going to put that in the boiler. We'll mix it all together and he'll load each of the boilers at about a ton and a half with every bucket full. Wow. Constantly. The trash then feeds into the furnace itself where a series of sliding feet on the bottom push the trash through. Falls off ledges every once in a while that are designed in to get some tumbling action um, to air it, aerate the to boiler mix it. Okay. and to get more air in there for better combustion. The burnout process takes about 45 minutes from crane dump to drop off. And in that 45 minutes, we extract as much of the thermal energy as we can, put it into water wall tubes, generate steam, and send the steam and across steam. to NASA. So how hot does this burn? What, you know, what's going on inside that boiler? It varies in the boiler. Right now, at the top end of the boiler, we've got 1,484 degrees. Wow. Down on the fuel bed, it's probably more like 2,000. Wow. All right. Uh, the steam goes across to NASA where they use it in wind tunnel research, heating in the wintertime, even air conditioning in the summertime. Right. What a cool operation. Very much so. So let me ask you, is this expensive? Does it cost taxpayers more to have this trash not going into the landfill? Actually, no. It uh, saves Hamptonians quite a bit of money. Most of our cost revenue or our revenue stream comes from sale of steam to NASA okay. because we can produce the steam they need less for less cost than they can. They've got fossil fuel powered boilers on their side. They can either burn fuel oil or natural gas. Okay. But to do so not only costs them the money for the fuel, but the emissions as well because they have a, a great deal more emissions with natural gas or fossil fuel. Right. Um, and they don't want that. So we burn the trash at less cost, NASA's happy, and they pay the lion's share of our budget. The rest we try and get from commercial tipping fees. Companies don't always like to go to the landfill. Canon, for example, is a great partner with us over in Newport News because they don't want any of their trash going to a landfill. They specify it needs to come here. So what else is there um, that you'd like to highlight about how this works or um, other awards you've won? Well, what I'd really like Hamptonians to know is we don't just send trash to the landfill. They've been in a partnership for well over 30 years with a leader in research and development and making things like this plant work successfully. If they've thrown anything away in the last 32 years, they have actively assisted with space shuttle wind tunnel testing, scramjet testing, um, the Calypso environmental module, uh, constellation lander testing, and even helped Michael Phelps win the Olympics. Oh, because with the swimsuit. his speedo was tested in NASA wind tunnels. So they can take a little sliver of that gold for themselves just by throwing trash away. Wow, that is amazing. John, how long have you personally been here? I've been uh, at the plant for four years next month, as a matter of fact. Came uh, out of the Navy. I'm uh, a machinist mate by trade, worked down in the engine rooms of many ships, and had a lot to learn when I got here. Fortunately, the professionals that we have here got me on board quick, and I'm happy to say this plant, 32 years in all, is doing better than it has. Some of our numbers are better than ever. Now, do you get inquiries from other places? Are people looking to start this up, or is it really fact, cost yeah. prohibitive, the startup piece of it? it? It can be cost prohibitive if you wanted to build a, a small plant like this. So most of the industry is looking at building much larger facilities. 
if they could find a dedicated partner like we have, it helps quite a bit. For example, the Army's come out and taken a look at us because they're interested in building plants like this overseas for their bases overseas. Oh, uh, where they don't need the... Exactly, because they don't want their trash to be just handled and tossed into a landfill. Right, and they don't We need do secure to... document destruction for almost all the federal agencies. Um, I did notice, now, when I first drove up, this is a trash facility. There's a, there's a little bit of odor out there. I really don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> But if I did, I would say that's the smell of money. The smell of money. That's right. You get used to it, I assume? Evidently, you do. Uh, I've got four sons, and when they come to visit the plant, that's all I hear is, ah, Dad, it's horrible. It smells. I don't know what you're talking about, guys. <laughs> Summer's not our, our best time to come on a tour. Debbie knows that, and she's <laughs> not going to subject you to it. So if you want to come out and see what we do, try and wait till the cooler months. Well, thank you much, very much, John, for having us here today. We do appreciate it. And thank you for watching this episode of Round Robin. I hope you will remember when you put stuff in the trash outside that you are not contributing to the landfill, that you are helping NASA do their work. Thank you.